They called it Three-Eye Atlas. But that name, clinical, almost casual, did nothing to prepare humanity for what it truly was. This emerald wanderer was no ordinary comet, no simple frozen shard drifting from the abyss between stars. From the moment astronomers first noticed its strange glow, its unnatural weight, its shimmering halo that pulsed rather than shined, they knew it was different, yet no one imagined what would come next. Stay with me until the end of this story, and if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the unravelling of mysteries like this one. Because the enigma of Three-Eye Atlas is only just beginning. The truth revealed itself on September 25th. For days, the sun had been seething, its surface boiling with twisted filaments of plasma and ink-dark sunspots that churned like storm clouds before a hurricane. Astronomers knew something was coming. Their instruments hummed warnings. Their simulations whispered of pressure building, tension winding tighter and tighter across the star's magnetic field. It felt inevitable, like the silence before an earthquake. And then, at precisely 3.47 UTC, the sky broke. A blinding flash tore across the solar disk. A loop of fire, tens of thousands of miles tall, arched upward like the arm of some cosmic beast before snapping loose and hurling itself into the void. This was no ordinary solar flare. It was a coronal mass ejection unlike anything ever recorded. Billions of tons of plasma, threaded with magnetic fields, launched outward at over 1.6 million miles per hour. The energy release staggered belief. Scientists compared it to every nuclear weapon ever built, multiplied by 20 million, or the asteroid strike that ended the age of the dinosaurs, magnified twentyfold, concentrated into one furious blast. Its trajectory was terrifyingly precise. The sun had not thrown its fury blindly into the dark. No, the storm was aimed directly at Three-Eye Atlas, the emerald giant, five kilometers wide, streaking across the solar system on a hyperbolic path that brushed dangerously close to Mars. For months, this object had unsettled researchers. Its mass was far too great, over 33 billion tons, heavier than any comet in recorded history. Its glow was stranger still, an eerie green halo born not of common comet gases, but of diatomic carbon, nickel, cobalt, compounds that belonged more to smelting furnaces and machine exhaust than to ice and dust. And now, at the very instant of its closest solar approach, it was about to take a direct strike from the most violent solar storm humanity had ever witnessed. Observatories across the globe, Hawaii, Chile, the Canary Islands held their collective breath. History told them what should happen. Comets disintegrate under far weaker assaults. Even gas giants stagger when buffeted by storms of this magnitude. The blow about to land could shred magnetic fields, warp planetary atmospheres, and snap fragile cosmic bodies like twigs. The expectation was clear, Three-Eye Atlas would not survive, and at first it seemed those expectations were correct. When the coronal mass ejection slammed into the Emerald Comet, the impact was immediate and brutal. Its luminous tail snapped like a whip, severed in an instant, and swept away into the roaring solar wind. Its glowing coma collapsed inward, vanishing like steam sucked down a drain. Instruments registered an abrupt, almost violent deceleration, from a blistering 37,000 miles per hour down to barely 5,000. To watchers across Earth, it appeared as though the monster had died, strangled and darkened by the star it had dared to approach. Relief swept through control rooms. Scientists clapped each other on the back, cheered, even wept. Months of dread, the rumors of alien technology, the whispered comparisons to a dormant mothership, seemed to dissolve. The sun itself had dealt the final blow. The cosmic horror had ended, they thought. The visitor was neutralized, drifting lifeless toward oblivion. But the universe had other plans. Two hours and seven minutes after the strike, something stirred. A faint flicker pulsed deep within the darkened nucleus. Once, twice, then it flared, brilliant and impossible. Instruments screamed warnings as detectors saturated with light. European Space Agency probes recorded an unmistakable surge. Nickel, cobalt, diatomic carbon, stronger than before. A new tail erupted, symmetrical and flawless, blazing emerald green, brighter than the original. Within minutes, speed readings climbed, 10,000 dimbosmuth, 50,000, 100,000, until at last, impossibly, the object returned to its former velocity, 
racing onward as though nothing had ever happened. No natural comet could do this. No icy relic of the void could endure a solar storm powerful enough to melt oceans and then emerge stronger, faster, brighter. Yet there it was, three-eye atlas alive, unbroken, its emerald plume shining defiantly against the black, as though it had not merely survived the sun's wrath, but consumed it. Dr. Lowe, one of the leading voices in the study of this anomaly, tried to put it in human terms. For weeks before September 25th, NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory had noticed strange magnetic quakes rippling across the sun's surface, always on the side facing three-eye atlas. It was as though something were prodding the star, teasing its magnetic field until it snapped. The timing of the CME, Lowe argued, was no coincidence. He likened it to a ship raising its sails to catch a perfect gust of wind. Only here the wind was a billion tons of electrified plasma. To Lowe, Three-Eye Atlas had not merely endured the storm. It had orchestrated it. The implications were staggering. If this was not a comet, what was it? Lowe speculated about an enormous machine encased in an invisible magnetic shell. An electromagnetic cocoon capable of bending solar plasma around itself, absorbing energy, even funneling it inward. In this view, the sun's fury had been less an attack than a refueling event. Evidence supported his claim. Polarization data suggested an unnaturally smooth surface beneath the glowing haze, unlike the jagged terrain of ordinary comets. Radar from the Goldstone Observatory hinted at a faint lattice pattern, a framework inconsistent with any known natural body. The object's mass distribution resembled not a solid core but a hollow shell. Every new measurement pushed the same conclusion. This was not a rock. This was a construct and worse, it was growing. After the CME, 3 i Atlas was not diminished but heavier. Its mass estimate crept upward, past 33 billion tons. Its magnetic field intensified so dramatically that probes recorded distortions in Mars's orbit. Subtle, yes, a few hundred meters over days, but measurable. For the first time in history, something from beyond the stars was tugging on a planet. Then came the realization that froze astronomers in their tracks. Three-I Atlas was not in a closed orbit like every other body bound by the sun. Its trajectory was hyperbolic. It was passing through unbound, unstoppable, and if its magnetic field continued to swell as it approached Mars, the red planet could be nudged, slightly at first, but enough to cascade into instability. Planetary resonances could unravel. Asteroids could be flung inward like artillery shells. In extreme scenarios, Mars's orbit might drift until it intersected Earth's. A collision, or worse, a gravitational chaos that turned the solar system into a billiard table of worlds, no comet has ever wielded such power. No natural body has ever carried a magnetosphere strong enough to tug on a planet millions of miles away. For Three-Eye Atlas to achieve this, it would need an energy output rivaling that of a star. In other words, technology so far beyond us, it borders on divinity. Now all eyes turn to Mars. The flyby looms, a near pass of just 1.67 million miles, close enough that the planet's magnetic field could be twisted, its orbit altered further. Space agencies have every telescope, every probe, every listening ear trained on the encounter. Yet their leaders whisper the same truth behind closed doors. Nothing humanity has can stop it. Nuclear warheads, kinetic impactors, experimental gravity tractors, all useless against a five-kilometer structure wrapped in an alien shield. And so the question remains, pressing, suffocating, impossible to ignore, do you still believe Three-Eye Atlas is just a comet, a relic of interstellar ice and dust? Or is it something far stranger, a vessel, a machine, a being, harvesting our star as fuel while reshaping the balance of our solar system?